Welcome to lecture 13. In this preparation lecture, we will explore more properties of angular momentum in the context of the hydrogen atom and introduce the fourth quantum number, spin. This lecture will be divided into two pieces. In the first part, we will discuss the Zeeman effect, which is what happens to the energy levels of the hydrogen atom when it is placed in a magnetic field. In the second part, we will introduce the fourth quantum number, intrinsic spin. When an atom, in this case hydrogen, is placed in a magnetic field, the degenerate energy states split. This is called the Zeeman effect. To understand why this occurs, first consider that the motion of an electric charge around a closed loop produces a magnetic dipole. This dipole, mu, is equal to the current I times the area of the loop, A. Let us consider a circular loop for simplicity. This means that the current I, being charge per second, is equal to the charge Q of the electron times its velocity V divided by the circumference of the circle 2 pi r. The area of the circle is pi r squared, so multiplying these two terms together gives Q r V divided by 2. More generally, if the loop isn't circular, then we can write this result as Q times r cross V divided by 2. Since the cross product between r and p being the momentum of the particle is the angular momentum L and P is equal to M times V then if we substitute in P over M for V we get negative E over 2 times the mass of the electron times the angular momentum L. You'll have noticed that there's now a negative sign in this expression. Here's how we get it. Looking at the picture we can see an electron spinning counterclockwise at a radius R around the origin. Its angular momentum according to the right hand rule says that it should point up. However, because current is defined as the direction that positive charges move in, the magnetic moment points down because the current is traveling clockwise. Since we're using the angular momentum L in this expression, the magnetic dipole points in the opposite direction, hence the minus sign. The potential energy due to a magnetic dipole in a magnetic field is U is equal to negative mu dot B. If the magnetic field is oriented in the z direction, then we can express this as negative mu z times bz, which is equal to positive e times bz divided by 2 times the mass of the electron times the angular momentum oriented in the z direction. So if a hydrogen atom is placed in a magnetic field orientated in the z direction, the Hamiltonian can now be constructed as negative h bar squared over 2 times the reduced mass times the Laplacian, minus e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught r, plus e times bz, divided by 2 times mass of the electron, times the angular momentum z. In this case, we have a potential energy term from both the interaction between the nucleus and the electron, as well as the one from the angular motion of the electrons around the nucleus in a magnetic field. This expression can alternatively be written as h hat naught plus e times the magnetic field orientated in the z direction divided by two times the mass of the electron times the angular momentum operator in the z direction where h hat naught is the Hamiltonian in the absence of a magnetic field. Applying this Hamiltonian to psi means h naught hat times psi plus e times bz divided by two times the mass of the electron times the angular momentum operator z applied to psi is equal to e times psi Let's look at this in two pieces. The first piece is when psi is operated on by h hat naught, the Hamiltonian in the absence of the magnetic field. That returns the energy of the hydrogen atom as seen in the hydrogen atom lecture. Looking at the second term applied to psi, we can see that it's a couple of constants and Lz operating on psi. When Lz is applied to psi, it returns mh bar times psi. This means that the energy of the hydrogen atom in a magnetic field is the sum of both these parts, meaning that E is equal to negative the reduced mass times the elementary charge raised to the power of 4 divided by 8 times epsilon naught squared h squared times n squared. And this term is added to the elementary charge times the strength of the magnetic field oriented in the z direction divided by 2 times the mass of the electron times m being the quantum number m times h bar. And in this case, recall that n is any positive integer, while m is any integer between minus l and plus l. 
Therefore, the energy of the hydrogen atom in a magnetic field depends on both N and M. Looking at this in the form of a picture, let's break this down into two cases. When there's no magnetic field, the energy of any given state is given by negative the reduced mass times the elementary charge raised to the power of 4 divided by 8 times epsilon naught squared h squared times n squared. Since there is only n in this equation, it doesn't matter the value of the other quantum numbers. This means that all three of the two p orbitals all share the same energy, since they all share the same n value. So regardless of what part of the 2p orbital the electron is in, when it decays to the 1s orbital, the same energy photon will be emitted, and only one spectral line is observed. When an exterior magnetic field is applied to the hydrogen atom, then the extra term, being the elementary charge times the magnetic field divided by 2 times the mass of the electron times the quantum number m times h bar, is now included, and the previously degenerate states now have different energies. This is because the m quantum number, the one that defines the z component of the electron's angular momentum, is now included in the energy of the term. This splits the 2p orbital into three pieces, and one sees three spectral lines, depending upon which part of the 2p orbital the electron was initially in prior to jumping down to the 1s orbital. So as an example, let's now put our hydrogen atom in a 10 tesla magnetic field and let's calculate what is the difference in energy between when m is equal to plus 1 and m is equal to 0. So let's find out what is this energy level split that's in this case where we have a magnetic field. So to do that, all we're really doing is we're just basically calculating what is the value of this term. Because it's the value of that term, and that's what's going to tell us that energy level splitting. Because the other term, the first term, which was the unperturbed energy level difference is something that we would use to basically calculate the difference between um, the unperturbed or when m is equal to zero state down to the 1s state. So let's look at the second term and let's calculate that energy spread between when m is equal to plus one and m is equal to zero because that'll tell us basically the energy difference that we have between each of these p states. So delta E of p state that's equal to, and we'll write out this full expression, the absolute value of the elementary charge times the magnetic field divided by 2 times the mass of the electron times the quantum number m times h bar. And in this case, this quantum number m, we can explicitly write in 1 because we're going to use the difference between the plus 1 state and the 0 state. So from that, I'm going to subtract off the absolute value of the elementary charge times the magnetic field Bz times 2 times the mass of the electron. I'm going to explicitly write in 0 for m, and then I have times h bar. I mean, what that means is that this second term, it goes to 0 because 0 times all those numbers gives me 0. So the difference in energy in, these, in this state is just going to be equal to this first term. So let's now plug in numbers. We have 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19. To that, I'm going to multiply it with 10, since it's in a 10 tesla magnetic field. I'm going to multiply that by h bar, 1.055 times 10 to the minus 34. And then I'm going to divide all this by 2 times the mass of the electron, 9.109 times 10 to the minus 31. And so that means when I multiply and divide all those numbers, that means the energy difference between those two states is 9.28 times 10 to the minus 23 joules. Let's compare this value to the case where the hydrogen atom is not in a magnetic field, which is this case that I'm outlining here in blue between the 2p and the 1s orbital. And again, that is essentially this term that I have highlighted in, in blue. And so in this case, I'm going to write energy not perturbed, and that's going to be equal to the difference in energy at the 2b orbital minus the energy in the 1s orbital. So I can write negative u naught e, e raised to the power of 4, divided by 8, epsilon naught squared, h squared. And in this case, I'll explicitly write in the 2 squared, minus mu naught, or mu e, e raised to the power of 4, divided by 8, epsilon naught squared, h squared, times 1 squared which again represents the energy in the n is equal to 2 state and the n is equal to 1 state. 
Now, all the other terms besides the end term is going to be exactly the same, so I can distribute it out to the front. And so in this case, writing it explicitly for the reduced mass, I can say mass of proton, mass of electron, divided by mass proton plus mass electron. I'm going to have e raised to the power of 4. I'm going to have 8 times epsilon naught squared, 8 squared. And this is going to be multiplied. Well, here I had, sorry, I had a minus minus. And so I've got 1 over 1 squared, which is 1 over 1. And then I still have the minus sign out front here. 1 over 2 squared is 1 over 4. Now if I move this term over, I can basically start substituting in numbers. I have 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27. That's multiplied by the mass of the electron. 9.109 times 10 to the minus 31. That's going to be divided by 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 plus 9.109 times 10 to the minus 31. That I'm going to be multiplying 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 raised to the power of 4. I'm going to divide all that by 8 times epsilon naught, 8.854 times 10 to the minus 12. That term is squared. Multiply that by Planck's constant, 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34. That term is squared. And then all of this is multiplied by 3 quarters, because I had 1 minus a quarter, which gives me 3 quarters. And so when I multiply all those terms out, I get 1.63 times 10 to the minus 18 joules. Taking a step back, just looking at these two numbers that we just calculated, we can see that there's about four orders of magnitude difference between these two numbers. And so what that tells us is that the difference in energy between these three spectral lines would be very small.